Honorable Lion of Icasa, members of the panel, um, thank you for the second opportunity to address you. Um, I'd like to say at the outset that late yesterday afternoon the entire process was brought into a very particular focus um, when Telcom presented. It was very evident from early on in Telcom submission that they regard the current process as being critical to their own future financial survival. And I think that's a, an extremely important point for the panel to take note of in assessing how the future process will devolve. It's, it's kind of robbed the, taken the magic from the process in a way, so I was thinking of addressing the panel today on, on this, this exercise of, of saying copper local loop unbundling clue, and maybe trying to change that into playing a game of Cluedo. Um, along the lines of, was it the three evil mobile networks with the scarce frequency in the wireless local loop, um, or is that the national local loop, or is that the national network? I, I can't tell you. I'm afraid it's technically complex. Um, it, it also might have been a future person unknown with fiber in a gated community. Um, that is something that we'll, we'll have to have a look at in future. Or is it, as everyone in the room seems to suspect, telecom with a copper pipe in the local loop? Um, and ISPA's answer to, to that has been quite clearly it's, it's all three of the above, that we at this stage need to be hedging our bets and looking at all the options and all the manners in which we can intervene in access networks in South Africa. Local loop unbundling is obviously one such a process, but it's one such process where the authority now has an extremely difficult decision to make. You have heard from Telcom that it is their intent to challenge the authority's decision to proceed with local loop unbundling on the basis of the Chapter 8 facilities leasing regulations. You have heard extensive and at times convoluted legal argument as to why that should be the case. There have been another, a, a number of other substantive arguments raised. To my mind at this stage, those are largely irrelevant. The critical question here is that an argument, a challenge has been, a gauntlet has been thrown down, a challenge has been made to ICASA's stated intention to proceed in a particular way, and it has been made abundantly apparent to the authority that should they choose to proceed in that particular way, that Telcom will litigate. We know what the implications of such litigation are. We know that there are extreme delays, probably at a minimum of five years, which will result to the process from such challenges. We therefore believe that ICASA is now faced with a challenge. Do you proceed with this process? Do you now go back to the ministry and consult and say, you have given us a direction that we should unbundle the local loop. We have proceeded as discussed. We have got to a particular point where it has become apparent that the incumbent fixed line operator is <clears throat> regards this as being a, an unjustified and extreme intrusion into its, its network and its rights, and that they intend to assert those rights and protect those rights. And I guess you will have to take it from there with the guidance of the Minister as to how we proceed. A question was put to ISPA yesterday um, after its, its, its presentation which was along the lines of uh, Telcom has taken a particular legal view um, challenging this and does ISPA have any comments in that regard and, and I'm certainly not going to sit here and say that ISPA agrees with what Telcom is saying. We don't. How relevant is that? What is relevant is that you've got a clearly stated intention to litigate and you've got an expressed basis to litigate. ISPA's views as to the validity or otherwise of that base are largely irrelevant. We would just like to point out uh, in one particular aspect um, something to the authority which is this argument about unbundling and leasing. 
and this argument about the term local leap and the fact that it doesn't appear to be listed in the list of essential of electronic communications facilities set out in section one and we would urge the authority to consider that argument from the viewpoint of there is no magic in the term local leap it is simply a bunch of electronic communications facilities which are operating together if you choose to group those facilities which you would want to make open to a leasing obligation into a particular configuration which is then known as the local loop and which is accepted as being the local loop the world over that definition then we do not believe that telecom's argument in that regard has a great deal of merit notwithstanding we find ourselves in a position where we we really just wish to urge the authority to consider the powers which it has at its disposal we have heard over the last two and a half days a great deal of debate and, and to be honest only about half of it has has really related to local loop unbundling what you have heard very clearly from the access seekers who have come to address you over the last two and a half days is that there is a massive difficulty and a bottleneck and a pricing conundrum rolled up in access networks which needs urgently to be addressed be that mobile, be that copper, as they currently exist. And, 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 and ISPA in particular has been at pains to, to point out that the fiber debate is not one which we can afford to ignore at this time. It is going to take quite some time for us to reach a position with regard to the application of open access and unbundling principles to fiber. There are different considerations to fiber which need to be taken into account and we do not dispute MTN's view that you need to be very careful of how you intervene in order to, to, to protect the bi-build equilibrium and that really ECOS's role with regard to fiber should be ensuring that fiber networks are rolled out as quickly as possible and as widely as possible. The last small point which I'd just like to make as well is that uh, we have heard over the last two and a half days about elephants in the room, ghosts in the room, lions on the panel and also a lady who has been present in the room by the name of Ria, uh, regulatory impact assessment. <coughs> there have been calls from all the major for all the incumbents all the major operators for the authority to undertake rears ISPA has a view that rears are desirable there can be no question that they create uh, an environment for a more nuanced approach on the part of the regulator but we have failed to find any requirement therefore in the ECA or any other legislation and we trust that you will be guided accordingly thank you Thank you very much, Isper. Do we have any questions for for Dominic? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, and thank you for not asking me to step outside the room. It was a daunting prospect before I came to sit here.